Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, grade nines, welcome. Uh, so what we're gonna do as the heading says today is the general reaction of an acid with a metal hydroxide, which by the way, is also a base, okay? So when a metal reacts with water, okay, let's maybe just put this down as a first point. When a metal reacts with water, all right, we have the outcome or the product is what's known as a metal hydroxide. Uh, let me just spell hydroxide quickly and then we can continue. There we go. Okay, so a hydroxide is any substance that contains a hydrogen group or hydroxide group rather. And we know what hydroxide group is, it's OH. One oxygen and one hydrogen bonded together. Okay, for example, a, a type of hydroxide that we would find is NaOH, okay, which we all know is sodium hydroxide. Okay, Na for sodium and OH for hydroxide. Okay, now metal hydroxide are also called bases. Okay, so putting brackets here, it's a base. Okay, now when any acid reacts with a metal hydroxide, the products are similar to that of an acid reacting with a metal oxide. We also have a salt plus water. <clears throat> we also have a salt plus water. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, oh, the type of salt will be dependent on the type of reactants. Okay, but let's have a look at the general formula. Let's use a little variation here or Mueller um, now that looks a bit like I wrote a W instead of a U there we go formula general formula for that would be your acid in words plus your metal hydroxide and that would give you a product or products of salt, which will be your main product, plus water. All right. Now, that's just the general equation, the general formula that always happens. So you know, if you recognize an acid and you recognize a metal hydroxide, you're going to get first the salt and water will be your byproduct. All right. Now, let's look at a reaction example of a reaction of an acid such as hydrochloric acid okay let's take hydrochloric acid and let's react it with um, a a, um, a base let's pick this base right here let's pick this metal hydroxide let's pick sodium hydroxide okay let's go have a look at that okay so we have um, hydrochloric acid again we're going to start with the word equation all right hydrochloric acid going to react that with sodium hydroxide okay and what we're going to get okay so we're going to get um, sodium is going to go with the Cl here so we're going to get um, sodium chloride as the salt which we know is table salt plus water okay and how would that look in a balanced chemical equation? Okay, so let's set that up here. Balanced chemical equation. Simple. Go back to my blue. Uh, ooh, HCl plus sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH. There you go. There we go. Let's rock it up like that. And then we're going to end up with NaCl plus H2O. All right. Now, the common name, of course, for NaCl, which we all know, which I've said it before, is also known as, of course, um, salt or more commonly known 
across the world as table salt. Okay, table salt, the salt we use in our tables. All right, cool. All right, I just want to talk a little bit about evaporation quickly uh, because there is this little experimente, okay, that was done in grade seven. When I was at school, I did it in grade nine, okay? <clears throat> so the curriculum has somewhat advanced, okay? But I think grade seven, if you haven't done it in grade seven, you'll probably definitely do it in grade eight or by latest grade nine. And of course, that is um, when we learned how we could use evaporation to recover salt from seawater, okay? We obviously we scoop up a bunch of uh, seawater, for example, just for experiment uh, purpose. And we just, uh, what do we do? We place it underneath a... Um, we obviously use a Bunsen, a tripod stand with a Bunsen burner, and we add a gauze, all right? And then we place our little shallow container over there, or little um, heat-resistant clay-type um, bowl with the water in there, um, sodium chloride water or salt water, and then we uh, heat up, or we crack open the Bunsen burner, okay? And then we... Um, we crack open the Bunsen burner, and then what do we do? We watch the water evaporate. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so obviously evaporation takes place. And then if we just let it boil, just keep going and let it evaporate, eventually we'll be left with very little water, all right? And then if we keep going, eventually we'll have dry salt or crystals, or just dry salt um, left in the bowl because we have evaporated it, okay? Uh, right, so um, once um, the water's all evaporated, we'll have little, I wouldn't say balls or what look like rock type substances of salt, which is called salt uh, crystals. Okay, so that's the whole thing of how we can neutralize um, salt or just use evaporation to separate water uh, from our um, salt, so we just get the salt. Okay. And that's something that we have already done or looked at, should have looked at in grade seven. Uh, if not, you'll definitely look at it in grade um, nine. Cool. Just thought I'd mention that. I saw the table salt in water prac. And um, yeah, it was a good prac. I think I got good marks for that prac when I was at school. I think so. I can't remember. It was grade nine. I don't remember so much things about grade. I remember doing the thing. I just don't remember the mark I got from it because, well, yeah, it's grade nine. I'm eight years out of school. Good grief. Okay. All right, so this is part three, grade nines um, of obviously the mind map that I did last week. Okay, we did, we, we did part one, part two, part three. So part three now would be the reaction of an acid with a metal carbonate, which by the way, is also a base. Let's use this color for, it, um, for this part. Now, metal carbonates, they are bases, metal compounds, they are bases, and they are basically used or can be used to neutralize, okay? We can neutralize them acids, okay? We can neutralize them. Whenever there is the same or whenever there is the name carbonate in the formula, okay? Carbonate basically means that we have this compound, okay? CO3, one carbon and three oxygens, okay? When acid, or when an acid reacts with a metal carbonate, okay? If I have an acid, and I react it with a metal carbonate, so I'm gonna shorten the word carbonate to just CO3, metal carbonate, the outcome that I have, okay, is one, a salt, two, I have water, and then I have a third one, carbon dioxide. Okay, salt, water, plus carbon dioxide, which makes sense since I have a carbonate in there. Okay, makes perfect sense. Okay, salt, water, and carbon dioxide. The type of salt form, once again, does depend on the reactants. Okay, now let's have a look at our general formula. Let's switch the colors here quickly general formula all right so i got my metal carbonate here plus 
plus my acid. I get a salt, all right, which I said, plus carbon dioxide plus water. So add in the CO2 plus H2O. Now we're going to have a look at an example with the chemical reaction, OK? So of course, <clears throat> the reaction, this reaction, though, before I make, um, fizzes as bubbles, all right? Now the reason why the fizzes, uh, the reaction fizzes, OK, not like the sweet fizzers, but fizzes or bubbles. Okay, we see bubbles coming or bubbling up is because this is a result of the carbon dioxide being given off. Okay, so whenever we see this happening in a reaction, we know this carbon dioxide that is being given off. Okay, and we do call the bubbling or the um, fizzing, we call it um, ever, I don't, I, sorry, not ever, it, people pronounce it as ever, but it's ever. Uh, effer, effervescence. Okay, if you ever taken a um, melt tab, uh, Panada melt tab, Broca or Vitus or Efferflu, you know what the what, what happened with the virus Efferflu. You'll notice you drop that little thing in water and <laughs> all the fizzing and the stuff happens, all the bubbles and stuff like that. It's carbon dioxide being given off. Okay, and we call it effervescence or effervescent tablets. Um, so let's look, at, uh, of course, at a word example first. And then we'll put that into a balanced chemical equation. Okay, word example, we're going to take again hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric, that's my chloric, right? Hmm, I did. Okay hydrochloric acid right and we're gonna react that with calcium carbonates okay one of the most common carbonates that we work with all right calcium carbonate and um, then what we get we get calcium chloride um, just take out the C calcium chloride and of course without uh, <laughs> Any further or do you? I'm just not going to write out these words. We'll write CO2 plus H2O. We all know what H2O and CO2 is. Okay. We're going to have a balanced chemical equation of the same above. Chemical EQ. Okay. So I can obviously just use that. So I've got HCl plus Ca CO3 because that's calcium carbonate. That gives me, of course, CaCl2 plus these two over here, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, of course, we need to balance this equation now. So if you balance it, uh, we notice that we've got one over here of one hydrogen. Here we have two hydrogens. We have one chlorine. Here we have two chlorines. So we're just going to put a two in front of HCl. One calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon, two, three oxygens, three oxygen. My equation for this is balanced. And that's all for my presentation in this session, great nights. Thank you so much for being such good students and listening to me in this session. Uh, we regroup next week where we look at which new topic we are moving on to next.